conditions would be where we would take, if say if the weather was uh, changing, we would need to transport um, a group of sheep, say from one field to another, because it would be more sheltered for them, because if say if there was a storm coming, that the sheep would need to be taken off the mountains, because we have, we have black-faced mountain sheep, so they would need to be taken off the mountains into the, into the sheds, where they'll be well sheltered, and there will be a better environment for them until the storm has passed, for example. But um, in, in the abattoir, that's kind of like the worst thing, but it's not particularly for their benefit, if you know what I mean, because that's, uh, that's kind of going to be the last uh, hour of their lives is going to be spent in that kind of cramped condition, where the same way that they'd be spent um, maybe 20 minutes a year in the trailer going from the mountains to the, um, to the stable, you know, back to the back to the home kind of part of the ranch. No, it's all right. Do, do you want to take the questions about um, Derek's questions about uh, infestations of fleas and stuff? Do you mind coming up to uh, ask the question on Mike about the question? Okay. Yeah, on the question of um, sophistication of the brain, and we're back to drawing lines and bed bugs. Uh, etc. I suppose one answer would be going back to the, um, the self-defense um, issue and so I think um, in terms of fleas and fleas on dogs that um, the vegans would probably take um, lethal action against them. At the same time I do know that um, all the alternative um, remedies for those kind of things have been explored and also most of the vegans that I've ever known they don't kill insects in the sense of um, usually flies and wasps and bees. They, they would usher them out of the house. In terms of bed bugs, that's a, that's a kind of di different issue. More complicated is the abortion question that was asked as well. And that's quite an interesting issue from a rights-based point of view. Sorry, where do you fall on? Are you pro-choice or are you that? just on the abortion question? <coughs> yeah, pro-choice, pro yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, again, I think most people I've ever known in my movement have been pro-choice. Um, and I think what we would say about that from a rights-based point of view is that there's a unique situation here where you've got a rights-bearer or a potential rights-bearer, depending on how you see it and in terms of age, etc., and development, inside the body of another right holder. So that actually is a very unique situation. And so from that point of view, I think it kind of puts the onus really in terms of the choice. Um, you know, and uh, I think most, most vegans would say things like, you know, they're pro-choice, but obviously they would never sanction the idea of, say, abortions as contraceptives, that, those, those kind of things. So it would be, um, it would be kind of pro-choice pro in, in a sense of being rather reluctant at the same time because, the, 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 you know, there's someone being killed. At the same time, you've got that philosophical issue that you've got one person within the body of another, and so that creates that kind of legal and philosophical issue which you know, can be quite complex. There were questions already asked, I'd just like a little bit of expansion on those. One was about pets that wasn't really answered. I'd like to know how vegans feel about owning pets, particularly primary carnivores like cats and dogs, and do vegans actually own such animals? And uh, secondly, there was a question asked about infestation mm -hmm. and uh, you've talked a couple of times about animal, animals, organisms, Sorry. rights and uh, oh, how you would feel towards them and refer to them as somebody. Now if a mosquito or a midge landed on my arm I would quite happily swat that without a second's thought. I wouldn't feel a moment's guilt. I'd like to know would you, is that to the extent you would take it? Yeah, no, we'll yeah. Yeah. We, we take all of these questions and then we'll answer them together. I, I, think, I think we do agree quite a lot that 
uh, we should not cause unnecessary suffering. Uh, I would argue for necessary suffering in the sense that we desire to eat meat and uh, for the vast majority of people that is not going to change the foreseeable future. I don't think you've made a good argument for the equalization of the sentience of the animal to the sentience of the human. I, I'm not uh, impressed by the equivalency. For me, an animal has a much lesser uh, worth than a human, and a speciesist, if you wish to call me that. I eat animals, I eat meat, and I would not feel in the slightest guilt, provided I was happy that the animal in question did not unduly suffer, because I don't think we are uh, callous in our attitudes. I think we have a degree of sensitivity towards other animals, and I'd like this, things to stay that way. Um, a bit more of a technical question. Uh, how do we divorce our gut feelings of um, how an ethical question should be handled from the, well, I suppose philosophy, the, the, the thought that goes into these questions? Because it, it seems that our gut feelings are quite misleading. Like um, the fact that we have a sort of uh, chauvinistic bias uh, for only considering our our own species um, and things of that nature, or, or even our family, uh, which, like, objectively, whether someone is a family member or not, doesn't matter as to a sort of utilitarian value. So, how, how do we divorce these, the, these two, the, the biases? Uh, how do we get rid of them? I don't know if you'd be glad to know, but I'm the last one here. Uh, so I, I suppose it's a question I would like to address to both speakers uh, and connect, I suppose, uh, atheism and, uh, and uh, veganism. So I'm wondering, uh, would you think that uh, there's still ideas or uh, uh, Christian uh, dogma dogmatic uh, assumptions that are still implicit in a, in a, well, a post-Christian uh, ideology, as it were? So, uh, firstly, in terms of uh, of atheism, <clears throat> many people may still uh, uh, categorize animals as higher or have a uh, was it more right as such than say animals. Even though, if you look at it from a purely impartial and like, objective view, when you eliminate any divine creator or any natural law as such, that there is no uh, objective as such in terms of just have drawn a line between animals and non-human animals. Or sorry, humans and non-human animals, in that sense. I suppose, uh, Roger, as well, you talk about uh, rights for animals. Do you think this also could be an offshoot of uh, Christianity as well? Perhaps uh, utilitarianism that uh, abolishes this, as uh, Bentham said, it's uh, nonsense on, on stilts. Perhaps uh, utilitarianism or some other uh, philosophy is probably more in accordance to uh, atheism than, say, a rights-based one. <laughs> okay, the um, the first question in that round then uh, is relation to uh, pets, which I probably uh, didn't address before, and. Um, they would be cl classified as uh, domesticates, so they would not be bred within a vegan world, and so they would be phased out effectively. Um, it does raise the case of people argue about a symbiotic relationship between um, beings that have, as it were, volunteered to live alongside uh, human beings, so there are lots of kind of different arguments uh, um, about that. But essentially, it would be a, situ a situation of not breeding them, and again caring for the existing ones until they died of old age, essentially. Um, but it, you know, it would it would certainly get rid of the you know, the dog shows and the cat shows, and it would it would essentially get rid of the the pet trade. Um, whether.